Yeah, you know, everyone's SCF Surf Coach, providing Surf Coach content for you. So I'm here to present, you know, just some some uh, underrated sort of picks. You know, um, I'm going to talk to you guys three or four, uh, three or four from each line, and uh, I'm I'm just going to discuss them. I'm going to try to make a case for them. You know what I mean? So maybe guys, uh, it's really players that I haven't really seen in many sides that you know I just want to build a bit more of a case for. So. There are going to be a few deep cuts, keep in mind. There are going to be a few where you just go, nah. And to be fair, I won't be picking many of these blokes at all. But I just think these are blokes that could be a chance, you know, just uh, keep an eye on. Um, uh, I'm just backing this off my own head with uh, preseason and all that. So, look, and as well, guys, before I start the video, I'll get into this real quick. Um, I'm really appreciating the support. I think I've uh, I've got about twenty subscribe twenty extra subscribers in about five days, and I really do appreciate that. So that's fantastic. So I'm going to see you guys a goal, uh, and make sure you like the video as well. But um, I want 250 subscribers before round one. I'm thinking on 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 I'm on 176 roughly. I could be wrong there, but I think you know uh, I'll set a target for you guys. I'd love to get to 250. Sp- subscribers before round one i think that's a goal that's achievable and i'd love you guys to help out if you aren't subscribed already and thank you to all that are already subscribed um i'm gonna go over like my team as well afterwards just real quickly though because you know there's only just a few changes made i've had a few more days to uh choose uh you know to build my side a bit better and um and as well i'm gonna do some uh, I'll give you guys some updates for what I'm going to do in the off season I still don't really know yet but I'll, I'll think of something so all right let's get into it um the first bike I've got here is Tom Cole now his highest his highest average in super coach is 67 his highest average was 67 to my knowledge and that would get him to roughly 370k so that that if he can get back to his career best that's a 190k up, uh, you know, uh, price increase. And I just think at 182k, sure he's not the best scorer, but I think he's got real potential to make a bit of money at that price. Now, West Coast fans, let me know in the comments down below, is he best 22? Because I feel like he is when he's up and going. I think he had a bit of an interrupted season last year. I don't remember exactly, but um, yeah, I just feel like he's best 22. And I think if he can get back to some solid form, even just a 60, a 60 average, that, that can get you a bit of coin there. So, I don't know. He's just one to keep in mind for me. Um, the next bloke I don't have to go down too far is Angus Brayshaw. Now, in his last 12 games last season, nine of them he hit the ton. And he's a defender. And that's when he – and, you know, the last few rounds he's playing more midfield. But even if he goes down back, I still think he's a very solid option. And at 550k, I think that's actually a pretty decent price for him. A bit more experience, a few more games under the belt. If you can find roughly an extra 50k on a Hayden Young or a Nick Dacos, etc., I think that's actually not a bad, uh, not a bad selection. And I'm highly considering him. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I should have mentioned I've got the Christmas hat on. Um, you know. it's... Near on Christmas, so uh, may as well pop it on. It's a little bit uncomfortable. I might take it off there. Um, the final one down back is Aaron Francis. Um, Francis, Francis. I say Francis, but um, we see the development from Sydney, and they're, they're one of the best in the competition at developing their players. And we just, I just think in my head, a former top 10 pick, you know, that just couldn't get going at Essendon, wasn't was never really a, a really comfortable, I felt. And I think if there's any club in the competition that can get a former top 10 pick up and going, I think it's Sydney. And I, I, I think um, I think he's certainly more of a uh, player down back. You know, I think I've seen him up forward. Uh, it's nothing special at all. So I think Francis is just one to keep an eye on. Like 190K, you know, I mean... I just don't think it's the worst option. Now, not many people are going to go for him because, you know, he's a defender forward, but at one end you've got Connor McKenna, who's 22K less, and at the other you've got Ben King and Toby McLean, you know, 10K less. So, but he's just one I wouldn't completely rule out. Now, let's head into the midfield. Um, I feel like this one 
just kind of surprised me how many people I'm picking him. But Cam McKenzie, for me, is a shoe in for round one. And uh, he'll get a generous role, I think. Early days, maybe not so. But, I mean, at least half back or a wing is certainly enticing enough for a rookie who's going to be playing each and every week to be in your side, in my opinion. I think I think McKenzie's just a very solid option as a rookie. Um, I think he can certainly be your M7 with uh, Ashcrofted M6 or whatever format you want to go with. But I really like McKenzie as an option as a rookie. Um, and I think in the second half of the year, not that's relevant because we'll all have him gone from our side. He's certainly a stepping stone. He'll definitely play a bit more inside mid, but I don't know. I just, I think McKenzie should be in a few more sides. Maybe I haven't looked at enough sides. I felt like I've looked at a fair few. Um, Zach Merritt, I didn't really have to go up. Now the midfield, it's a bit tough to find someone because I feel like it's actually kind of the format for the midfield this year is pretty easy at this stage. You've got Hopper, Ashcroft, and you know, they're sort of, covering that mid-price sort of region and carrying it. And then you could have the odd Dom Sheed here and there. But So I'll talk about a couple of premiums that aren't getting much love. Zach Merritt, um, he certainly did me a very good job last season delivering a couple of tons, a uh, few tons. I think he scored 140 or 150 in the last round of the season. And uh, I just think, you know, if you want a really solid M6 for the rest of the season... He won't let you down. New coach, uh, just a very solid option. They will rarely stuff you up for a week. So I don't know. I think Merritt is just a really solid option. But once again, you've got Jack Steele, who's 13K less, who's certainly got a higher ceiling. Um, but I don't know. I thought Merritt would be in a few more sides. Uh, Christian Petrarca, I have mentioned his TikToks. They're fantastic. But he's just in ripping Nick, you know. He's basically got a 10-pack at this point, you know, even a 12-pack. Like, he's just so shredded, ready to go. A bit of a redemption season for the Ds as well. I feel like they'll be up and about, you know, uh, wanting to prove people wrong, that they can still be a a dynasty uh, sort of side. So, um, I think Petrarca, I don't know how old he is. If he was drafted in, was he drafted in 2014? I think he was. So how old would he be now if it's 2023? Probably 26, 27 would be a guess, but I'm not really good with math. So, But, um, yeah, look, I, I think Petrarca, he can be the difference maker. It's a big risk because I feel like he's one of those players where he can absolutely get you absolutely flying to start the year with some massive scores. We saw it in 2021. He was going uh, he was going bonkers early. Um, also, but at the same time, he can just deliver a 70. But... I think he'll want to prove a point early in the season. So, Rux, who we got here? Um, Rowan Marshall. Now, I was talking to my um, St Kilda mate about Rowan Marshall, and he's picking him. And I'm just like, I'm a bit worried about Max King. I'm a bit worried about Max King here. Uh, Yeah, it's Max King. You know, him being out of the side and him just having to play more of a forward role. But I've heard Ross Lyon as well. And uh, my, my Saints mate said, I don't think that's actually going to happen that much. I I don't think that will happen at all, him going down forward. Now with Ryder gone as well, I think we need to consider that. But we're, I was speaking, uh, not speaking, but I was hearing Ross Lyon on SEN. He has a lot of faith in Cooper Sharman being able to um, take Ben King's uh, Max King's spot for the time being. That just makes me think, you know, and Jack Hayes can do that as well. Maybe they're still more of a wait and see, but I think at the minute, you know, he's not a bad option. 506K, we're struggling as hell with a lot of these rucks. So, and I just think at 506K, we know what he's capable of. If he, if the, if from what I'm hearing, and he's staying in the ruck, I think that's just, oh, I'm picking him if he, if, we get promise that he is staying in the ruck. I'm picking him with Tim English next year. Um, the next one I've got is Sam Draper. He's talked a big game, and I love it. Let's see if he can back it up. But he hasn't talked a big game. It's just more like oh, he's just seeing himself a really good goal of, I want to be on Max Scorn's level as a ruck next year. And I think that's a great goal to have. So... You know, Draper, we're just waiting, aren't we? We're just waiting on him to fully explode. 
He's got the talent there, of course. So I'm very interested to see how he how he goes. And I think, you know, if we're really if I'm really stuck on rucks, I might actually go with Draper and just really risk it all. You know, r- risk my start of the season to see if he uh, backs up his own game. You can certainly see he's just so mobile. You know, there's not going to be many rucks that take his spot um, or rotating in the ruck. He's mainly the sole ruck at Essendon. Um, the other one is a real deep cut, <laughs> but I, I was struggling a bit here. But we've gone Radagalia. I think because Tom Hawkins, I don't know exactly his status on his injury, but I'm pretty sure he went for surgery. And it was actually pretty late in the off season. Uh, you know, pretty late into the off season for Tom Hawkins. And I just think if Radagalia can if Tom Hawkins is struggling to get going, and I think Geelong are now at the risk of fully losing Radagalia, I think they'll just want to say to Asava that here we go, here's your here's your time to shine. We'll give you a few more runs on the board. I I just don't think he's the worst option. And a 174k ruck forward. I mean, if he's playing, I mean, there's no reason to have him at R three, you know, and just have Nick Madden on the bench and you can rotate them. How do you feel? So, I want to keep in mind. Uh, another deep cut here, Cozzy Pickett. Um, I've seen preseason um, photos of him. He's fully bulked up. He's bulked up. And uh, I saw a reporter, I think Mitch Cleary might have said it or something, but he wants to He wants to be playing a bit more in the midfield. And um, if he can get that and really just add a bit of a – I know they've already got a point of difference in Petrarca, but just another extra element to um, their midfield. I think Cozzy Pickett, if he can rotate through the midfield, I think that's certainly an easy 100K he can get. Is he a keeper? Probably not, but a little stepping stone uh, didn't hurt anyone. Ben Long, um, he is he was at St Kilda, now he's in the gold and red. I think Ben Long, uh, I think I mentioned this in my uh, first reaction to prices and all that video where I mentioned that Will Powell, Lockie Weller, and there's someone else, Connor Budrick. I know Budrick doesn't really play in the same spot, but there are certainly a couple of um, uh, players down at the Suns in that sort of certain position. I just wonder, he is he, obviously very quick. He can just, I feel like he can slot in and maybe be alongside Brandon Ellis and be a bit of a, bit of a seagull down back and just uh, dictate play a bit and plays really hard. We'll get a lot of tackles. Just um, one to keep in mind. I doubt, I doubt many are going to go that route, but I guess this is the whole point of this video. Josh Corbett. Um, I'm not too sure on this one because uh, I did say in my team builder video that there is a gaping hole down forward for Freo, but, uh, I th- it seems like Luke Jackson's going to be playing forward. So, but I think at 163k, if he can play as that second key forward, I mean, there's no reason why he can't make I don't know 120k or whatnot for Josh, Josh Corbett. Was isn't the worst pick in the world. I've got a bonus one as well. Now, this is purely from uh, what George has said, but uh, Josh Bruce did uh, I, he did say that they're planning on they could plan on uh, using Josh Bruce as a defender. Now, that's a bit more super coach friendly. And once again, he could be an easy 120K sort of uh, stepping stone as well. So, look, those are, those are my 13 blokes, you know. Um, I am going to refresh the page and you guys get to see my actual side. So, maybe you guys like this little setup. Um, I just thought I'm home alone, may as well make a video. Let's have a look at my actual team. All right. So what are the changes? I've actually got Andy Brayshaw on my side. Um, I just think, you know, I think there's a, you've got to have a real, not balance, but I think you've got to be smart with your first team because your first team is just so important to nail it or nail most of it. And I, I had Hayden Young there and I mean, I had a bit of money change and I, it's, you know, I had a bit more money spare. So I just thought, you know what? Come round one, who do I want in my side? Hayden Young, who might be good or it might be a bit of a disaster. Would I want Angus Brayshaw? That's going to, you know, I know what he's capable of. He's 
he scored nine of his last 12 games, he scored a ton. Um, and I just think if he keeps that role, I mean, certainly I think I, th- I think he's a good pick. So uh, I've gone with Jack Bowes as well. Not sure about him. I'll probably chop and change a bit with him. Uh, I just don't know. Will Geelong actually play him inside mid? Uh, it's a bloody tough midfield to get in, but I guess we'll see. Um, Josh Fay, I mean, ignore the rookies. Like it's so hard to gauge at the minute. I've gone Bont. Um, feel like a few people are jumping on that train, and I actually, I'm actually thinking in my head. You know what? That's a bad pick because I, I actually think he's he's more secure to be in that midfield now than McRae is because I think Bont. He's certainly got the high ceiling as well. You know, he can be a real game changer for your side for the whole year. And um, you certainly don't want to miss out on his massive scores. Now with Dunkley gone, I felt like Dunkley and Bont were both similar in terms of the, their way to change the game. And with Bont just there, surely can't spend much time uh, down forward. We'll see if he has a full preseason for sure. Um, because most of last year was playing hurt. So we'll just say on, we'll just say on Bont. Um, he can play through injury, as uh, George said. I, I've nabbed a couple of things off George. I'm, I won't, I won't shy away from that. But I, I actually agree with him. Like Bont, you know, I think he's just a better pick than McRae at the minute for me. I've still kept Tom Green, uh, Will Phillips. I added. I felt like I didn't have him last time, but I mean, there's no reason why I can't make 140k get to 300 in my book. Uh, I think Elijah Hewitt. I think I had. Jared Witts, I have no idea what to do. I just had the extra money to work with, you know. So if I if I went Marshall, who I'm still considering, and Darcy Cameron, Sam Draper, but I've got 140K. I don't really know what to do with the money. Now, you could probably say, don't use the money. Don't – you don't have to use the money, but I just think, I just think at the minute, look, Jared Witts, why not put him in there with English? But – um. I'm I'm keen on English. I'm not too sure on Jared Witts. Uh, Tim Taranto added, um, this is certainly more of a template side, I feel. Um, you know, I'm, I haven't got four down back. You know, it's three and it, I've gone with a three, four, two, three set up at the minute in terms of premiums. Um, Tim Taranto, he won the 2K time trial. I just don't know how I feel. Like, Richmond isn't really a super coach friendly side. You know what I mean? Like, we haven't seen many, you know, to just stay as proper premiums. And I just think with Timmy Taranto, you know, do I want two Richmond midfielders? I don't know if I do if they're not that good at scoring. You know, it's just the way they, they set up. But Tim Taranto, if you don't go with him, you're just missing out, I feel. Um, Toby McLean, Ben King, I'm still... I feel like every Supercoach YouTuber certainly has their own poster boy, or not poster boy, but bloke that they're just big on and won't... Yeah, they're just really big on the player. For me, it's Fergus Green, you know. It seems like, you know, George is Connor McDonald, uh, Eno's Shrek, of course. Um, certainly... You know, oh, there's another one, but I can't think it off the top of my head. But for me, it's Fergus Green. I'm really big on Fergus Green, and um, I don't know. I, I'm just, I just think he plays around one, takes Gunson's spot, Connor Stone, and, and all that. So that's my side. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll just speak for thirty seconds on what I'm going to do in the off season. I'm not too sure. Look, um, I think I'm going to do similar concept style videos like this. You know. Just talking over a few players. Um, I'm going to be teaming up with Super Coach Pro in a couple of videos. We're actually meeting up in a cu- uh, in a week or two, just to discuss how we are going to operate things this year. So we'll be making videos on each other's channel. I'm sure um, there's still uh, ideas to be exchanged in terms of could we do a podcast together? Um, there's certainly a few Super Coach podcasts around, so we'll just have to talk about it. And also, um, I'm going to be in a, a Hawthorne preview video with Supercoach with DR and uh, Spills by the seams of it. So uh, I'm super keen for that, you know. Uh, Supercoach with DR and Spills, they're certainly an iconic duo 
of Super Coach at the minute, so I'm super keen for that and just to get my name out there. So anyway, um, this is – I'll probably upload one more video before Christmas and then uh, we'll see how we go. I'll do I'll do um, a couple of videos probably heading into the new year, um, before the new year. So see how we go. Look, I haven't thought of I, – I, I want to do – during the year, so I want to do a – preview for rounds uh, a round review of course um maybe some maybe something to do with um super coach pro uh, during each week we'll uh, we'll discuss that a bit further and um i want to create my own series i'm, I'm just trying to really gauge some ideas cuz it's really hard to actually think of some you know set in stone uh ideas weekly series sort of thing so I'm just going to have to get my head around that and I'll think of something. Don't worry, guys. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've rabbled on for long enough. So, hope you guys... Um, I'll, I'll save that for the next video, but I hope you guys have a good day. Um, thank you guys for tuning in if you're still here. And, um, yeah, let's get to 250 subscribers before round one. And uh, have a good one, guys. Cheers.